I love looking at the climbers and adventurers and people that go out and they push the limits. They push what is perceived to be the normal. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do that, of course. I'm going to see what, what's out there. What else could we do with these amazing animals? Make it ooze with the unthinkable. Don't stop till you come first. Life too unpredictable. Take control of what you're worth. Wasting time's forgivable, but nobody wants to grow old. It's time for the original to come and break them all. Take it easy, just one step at a time. Hi, I'm Emma Massingale, and this is my story. Good boys. I've had horses all my life. My um, godmother gave me a pony uh, as a christening present when I was six months old. And um, she was called Minnie, and she was quite a cheeky little Welsh mountain pony. When I was a teenager, my dad bought me a horse called Kariba who, um, he was quite a difficult horse, and I took him to Pony Club. We were always like really naughty, he used to fuck me off. And rather than sell him or get rid of him, I thought I'd learn how to train him, because I loved him. He was big and black, and every girl's dream, really. I've never really felt like I fitted in too much with people, and at school, um, it, it was, I really loved playing, going home and riding my horses and doing that sort of thing. And then when I started professionally training horses for a living, I started off just trying to fit in, trying to be normal, trying to do eventing and, and normal things. Um, but I, the bit I really loved was when I came home and I would take all the kit off and I'd just have my horses and, and I was just at one with my horses. One day I got a phone call asking if I'd train this stallion and um, I thought, oh God, you know, stallions are a pain in the bum to have in the yard, you know, they squawk a lot and you know, wreck your fencing and all that stuff. So I was like, oh yeah, okay, all right, I needed the money. And then, um, so Marcus arrived and originally he was you know, just like any other stallion. I didn't have any connection with him. He just shouted at all the mares and was a bit of a pain. I realised that there was something between this horse and I and I realised that I couldn't try and make him do anything. He's 17 2 stallion, there was no way I could physically make him. So I thought, well, I'll get him to be my friend, you know, and if he was my friend, then perhaps he'd look after me and we could do some good things together. I was still eventing at the time and we started off down that road and I enjoyed that and he was quite successful in the early days. But I realised then I was risking him and the only bit I was really enjoying was coming home and hooning around the field bareback and that sort of thing. I thought, I know, I'll change. I'll take the risk to be my own and I'd, I'd make my own adventure with this horse. off being like little things for example because he's so big I couldn't jump on him from the floor so I thought oh, I'll teach him to lie on the floor so I could get on and it, it started off like that but quite quickly I realized that that was actually rather fun and so I thought oh, what else could I teach him to do and the other horses in my yard as well I thought what else could I teach them to do legs good boy legs good boy good boy With horses, they, they show you something that they're really good at. They express themselves and they'll, when you're training them, you'll see some little thing that they offer you that's not a technique or about of anything. It's just something they give you um, when they become your friend and they want to offer it. And then you, I made this, this is what I did. And I really enjoyed the, the creativity and using my imagination to train them to do whatever, literally whatever I could think of.
first of all brought a horse into the house and lay him down under the Christmas tree. And I know that sounds completely bonkers. It was really interesting, you know, what it took to train him to that point. And he was quite a difficult horse originally. So when I realised I could do that, and I could bring him in, and he'd do it confidently, and the horses were happy to do what I asked. It was like a massive buzz, and this whole new world opened of possibilities, you know, it's sort of crazy, thinking right now, what, what's next? I uh, had another horse at the time called Bex, and I bought him to go around Badminton, but he had uh, lameness issues and he had a condition called navicular, which meant he was never going to be a competition horse. The one thing he could do was he could chase me around the field really well, so I thought, well, that'll do, he can just do that for the rest of his life. But from there, I realised that if I adopted the same technique as I had with Marcus, I could teach him to do other things. So I started riding him rainless and playing about him on the beach and just doing what he could do physically. From there I thought well what if I do it one? I'll have a go with two and then three. <laughs> and then before I knew it I'd sort of grown into this idea of having a liberty theme. It sort of evolved. It wasn't a specific, right, today I'm going to create a team of horses. I didn't really know how to, how or where to start. I just knew I had this idea that I couldn't let go, you know, this dream of having this team of horses that I could stand on and do crazy stuff on and do anything I could think of. was always plagued with injuries um, and as much as I loved him and, and dearly learnt so much from him I could never fix him you know he wasn't fixable so we we always were a little bit wild um, it was never very safe he was either injured or, or I was because the work wasn't consistent a couple of years ago I had a, a terrible accident I was roaming riding which is standing up on the horses I had one foot on each of my sport horse team it had been raining so I was stood on their rugs my foot slipped off the back and these horses are about 18, 17 hands, 16 hands. So I fell quite a long way and because it had been raining the school was really hard and so it was like concrete really. And so I landed and um, broke two of my vertebrae. As soon as I'd come off the horses I knew it was really serious. I knew that um, I knew it wasn't just a minor knock. It wasn't really um, massively painful at the beginning. Um, more just in my head, <laughs> thinking, oh my God. And when the doctor comes around and they go, oh yes, you've broken your back, you know, that's something that you then just burst into tears. You're, you know, you just can't see yourself ever riding again or doing anything. And I'm well aware that that, that is something that's real. You know, that does happen. Um, and how lucky and how fortunate I was that that didn't happen to me. Extremely scary feeling like your whole life could just stop in an instant and you think, my God, I just risked it all. And I could see, um, you know, when I was in hospital, I could totally see what I'd done. I'd missed massive parts of my training out with these horses. So one horse that I had one foot on at the time, um, it wasn't even backed. And although, you know, saying it, it sounds completely ridiculous, but at the time it seemed okay because I knew these horses so well. But although we know our horses really well and I know each of the ones I train and have of my own, they're still massively powerful, unpredictable to the point of they react to things. And I felt with Bex, I was always, he was always a little bit too wild to keep me safe and for me to, to stay safe when I was training him. Let's go slowly. And then I lost Bex. He, he um, had to be put down because he just wasn't sound and I couldn't get him to even be sound for a few days. Some mornings I'd be you know, sitting at breakfast, sobbing my eyes out to Jeremy, saying, oh, I can't see a way forward. It was always two steps forward and one back, or most, seemed like most of the time it was one step forward and two back. Um, and they, you know, it's hard because trying to find a way out, you know, I love all my horses, like, they mean everything to me. But when you realise that you don't have the horses to necessarily do the dream and to do what you want to do, that's really difficult. And when you lose one or one gets broken, that's like a, your whole world, it's like part of your family. To think about buying a whole herd of horses in one go is quite a challenge. Yay! Woo! 
they really do feel like there is no limit to what we could achieve together. <laughs>